Hi, I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm delighted to bring you today's episode of Between Friends. We are having the ultimate hoop showdown. It's a first here at Dime to do this live on camera, and we are going to have a blast. So what's it all about? Well, you know, what's better, a standard hoop or a snap hoop monster? And how do you define better? Well, in my book, it's probably, I mean, I most certainly want perfect results when I'm stitched, you know, on my stitch out. And I'm not going to use any method that isn't going to give me those results. But speed is really important. When you do a lot of hooping during the day, you want to do it as fast as you can. So I'm not going to do this. I mean, how can I compete with myself, right? I have to have somebody else join me. And that is my good friend, Ashley Jones, and our lead educator at Dime, hailing from Key Largo, Florida, which she survived last week's Hurricane Ian. So welcome, Ashley. Hi, Eileen. How are you today? I'm doing really great. It's wonderful to have you here. And you know, many people ask, how is all the Dime team, those that live in Florida? And of course, you are one of them. So we're happy to know that you're safe. Awesome. Well, I thank you. Thanks for everybody for, for thinking of us down here. So, but yeah, everything's good. A lot more damage on the West Coast of Florida versus where I am. Right. But your husband, you know, I, I didn't even tell you I was going to bring this in, but he has an integral part in the recovery, right? He is a helicopter pilot. So he's been shuttling supplies, people, equipment over to that area, right? Yes, absolutely. And so um, the agency that he works for does a lot of uh, support for uh, hurricane relief. And so he's been working on that. That's slowed down a little bit. I think that they still have others over there handling it for his agency. It has slowed down a bit. I see. Well, we're grateful for his service. So pass that on to him for sure. Um, let's see. You know, we have someone here in the house that uh, is looking for new hoops. So she's in the right place, right? Of course, I can't find yes, her she now. Is. Yeah, we have lots of another uh, embroiderer friend, Lynn Pike. She's from Southeast Florida and Sybil in Oklahoma, Austin, Minnesota. I wonder what the weather is like up there right now. And Retha Ranke, thanks for joining us today. She's a regular here, Ashley. Yes, she is. So good to see her. Absolutely. It, you know, so we really appreciate if you sign in, let us know where you're watching from. And if you have some friends who are embroiderers, send them this link, tell them to join the fun over here so we can see who is going to win the, uh, tex the Texas, the hoop showdown, right? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Ashley, you know, maybe people don't really understand the difference or the maybe the number one reason why I prefer a magnetic hoop over a standard hoop. So I'm going to move over to the overhead cam and kind of illustrate that so they can really understand the difference between um, a standard hoop and a flat magnetic hoop. So you are all familiar with your standard hoop. We have an inner ring and an outer ring, and the inner ring is inserted into the outer ring. We tighten that up to get a nice firm hold on our fabric. With a flat magnetic hoop, we have a flat top and a flat metal bottom. Identical size sewing field, Dime doesn't change your sewing field. We um, mimic the standard hoop sewing field on our hoop. So if you're using a four by four on your machine and it's recognized on your machine, then you can use our four by four. But when we unhoop the fabric, let's take a look at what happens to that fabric that's in the standard hoop. And you can see that ring, that fiber distortion, also known as hoop burn, right? Which is very undesirable. And sometimes, you know, if this is a gift, of course, this piece of canvas would not just be a gift, but if it's a finished item, you know, you don't have the time to launder it or maybe even press away any kind of hoop burn and keep your fingers crossed that it's actually going to be removed. On a magnetic hoop, um, it's totally different. We, when we separate that top from the bottom, we have absolutely no hoop burn. It's just a nice flat surface. And here, look at the difference between the two sides. Here's my the side that I used on the magnetic hoop. And over here is our um, standard hoop and definitely has that visible ring. Ugh. I hate that. Don't you, Ashley? 
Yes. Yes, absolutely. So sometimes it makes such a bad hoop burn that you can't even use that item. Yeah, I know. It, it's right. It's very frustrating. And you often don't find out, of course, so the embroidery is complete and it's out of the hoop. So people also want to know about, um, you know, having a magnetic hoop near their sewing machine, their embroidery machine. And many, many years ago, when this hobby first became available to us, we were told not to have a magnetic pin cushion near our machine. Well, times have changed, right, Ashley? And Absolutely. so today, yeah, you know, we have um, we ha the brain of that sewing machine, that embroidery machine is about the size of your thumbnail, and it is embedded in a highly insulated area in your embroidery machine. You don't have to worry about the magnetic field uh, harming that brain. So um, I put this back together, but I really meant to just keep it separate. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to place a pair of scissors on the magnetic side of the hoop. So you can see they stay in place, right? No magic here, it's magnets. On top, it's not you know, gonna stay there. It, there's a little bit of force, but not much at all. So we know that that magnetic force is um, only on the bottom of the hoop. So I'm going to do what we're never supposed to do, and that is attach the top to the bottom without fabric. And I, I know, I hate that too, but I wanted, <laughs> I just want to show you that now I can't attach that scissor to the hoop either because the magnetic field is stopped by the metal bottom. So that's the secret, right? <laughs> right. And computers are so advanced these days. So used to there was not much insulation, but, you know, for all the computer components. And these days there's a lot more protection for your computer components than used to be. Right. And, you know, for those who do what I just did, which we're not supposed to do, right? And when I say we're not supposed to, that just means it can be challenging to separate the magnetic top from the bottom when, without stabilizer or fabric in between because it's a strong hold, which we want. If you do this, then just slide the two pieces apart. We don't try to lift. We slide and then it's much easier to separate. Now, all the hoops come with a magnetic shield. That's what we call this corrugated plastic. We just call it a, a magnetic shield. And really, it's just for storing the two pieces together. And I hang mine on pegboard. I can just place it, you know, the uh, hook right through this opening. And then I hang it on a wall of pegboard. Um, it's also really handy to use this magnet shield to transport hooped fabric. You know, you just take it over to the machine with this underneath, and then you don't have to worry about putting your hand through the fabric. Ugh, that's frustrating. Right, Ashley? Right, absolutely. So nothing worse than loosening your project and then it not lining up when you get to the embroidery machine and start stitching. I know, I know. So, you know, here we have Judy Burt saying she has a Husqvarna Viking Ruby Deluxe and she believes it won't accept the magnetic hoop. Any comments? Well, I don't know about the Ruby specifically, but we do have a place where we can find out. So on our website, we have, um, we have a compatibility chart that is super handy and completely comprehensive. So if you go to dzgns.com, Com, you can uh, just type in hoops or click on the hoop icon to get you there. And then when you are over at the hoop page, click on the compatibility chart and you'll notice it's, you know, about 15 pages long and you'll want to advance to your machine brand. And that's where you will find all of the compatible hoops for your brand and you can locate your machine within that brand. So for our friend who has the, the Ruby, you know, she would go to Viking and then scroll through and see if we have any hoops that are compatible with her model. So let's see how advanced it is. When you go to, here we are on Baby Lock, and you could see um, that on the compatibility chart at the, sh chart at the top, it has the size of the hoop, four by four, five by seven, and so on. And on the left-hand column, it lists the machine model. And in the center where they meet is the uh, 
hoop for you that is compatible and our dime hoop. If you click on that hoop, it will take you to that actual hoop. And then you can learn more about your hoop size there and add it to your cart if you'd like. So yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. It. I'm so yeah. impressed with uh, our new hoop chart, our compatibility chart, because you know, mm -hmm. there's so many machine models. Every year, each brand of machine, it releases new models. And, mm -hmm. you know, we don't get rid of the old models because our hoops are still compatible with them. But um, there, we were running out of space as to where to <laughs> add them, you know? Right, absolutely. So, and I definitely think it's easy to use, you know, um, if, since it's a, a, a file that's interactive, like when you click on your machine brand, it takes you to those machine brands as well. So you don't have to scroll mm -hmm. past. So in the, um, in the beginning in the glossary, then you click and then head right to uh, your machine brand. So yeah, makes yes. it a lot easier. It really does make it a lot easier. Now, one thing we all have to understand is Dime hoops don't change your sewing field. Dime hoops don't change the brain in your sewing machine. So I have a slide to kind of illustrate that. On the Bernina machines, Bernina hoops are oval and their sewing field is oval. You know, when you purchase a Bernina machine, like it will tell you that the hoop size is 210 by 400. Well, that sewing field is accurate in the absolute dead center, X and Y axis, you know, north and south, whatever you wanna call it, east and west. That's where it is truly a 210 by 400. But you are not able to sew in the corners of a 210 by 400. Our monster hoops in the larger Bernina size are rectangular, but the Bernina machines do not recognize our hoops as rectangular. They recognize them as the same oval sewing field as their standard hoops. So that's very important for you to understand. Dime hoops can't change your machine, even though we wish they could, but they can't. <laughs> right, Ashley? Right, absolutely. Yeah, the machine determines our sewing field. Yeah. Um, and so we can only use that sewing field that the machine um, has, you know, created for us, basically. So right. that that's our boundary. Um, yeah. And the machine determines that. So let's take a look under the camera. So, uh, you know, here's the standard four by four, right? And that is, you know, four inch sewing field, east, west, north, south. And so is our dime hoop. Now, if you were to measure these, you know, nowhere does this hoop measure four inches. It's going to be larger and wider than four inches because we need some area for the foot to clear the hoop. Same thing with the dime hoop. So you should understand your sewing field and rely on your machine manual to tell you the size of your sewing field and do not rely on the actual measurement of the outside of the hoop. That does not tell you the sewing field. And we didn't make that up. The machine manufacturers made that up, right, Ashley? Right, absolutely. And that yeah. extra space within your hoop, um, it keeps your your foot of your embroidery machine away from the edge of your hoop. So the hoop is larger than your actual sewing field so that your foot doesn't strike your embroidery hoop. Yes, right. So here, let's take a look at the Bernina Oval. This is their, they call it the medium oval. And, you know, it's a beautiful hoop, right? They have gorgeous uh, standard hoops, and they like an oval sewing field. So in our standard, we mimicked as best you could with magnets, an oval shape. Um, and we also did that on the midi size. So this is the next step up. Again, it's oval. And so is our dime hoop. So clearly you would understand that you're not going to get a rectangular sewing field, right? It's going to, our dime hoop is going to be the same magnetic uh, or the same sewing field as your standard hoop. But it's on those larger hoops that dime has made 
uh, for Bernina that are rectangular. We'll go back to that. Um, and you can see that we have supplied a rectangular hoop, and yet its sewing field will be the same as the Bernina oval sewing field. And the, um, the attachment to Eileen is identical. That's how the machine knows that sewing field, whether it's using yeah. our magnetic hoops or the standard hoop, correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's very true. Um, and, you know, it's, and I can give you a, a close look at that so you understand. So here you have these four fingers, let's call them. And on its companion of the Bernina hoop, you also have four fingers right here. So it's these four fingers that are telling the machine, oh, I'm that medium oval. And then when we get to the midi, it looks different. It's just one arrow. I'm trying to get that in the camera where you can see, oh, here, I can use my, my bone Your hand. <laughs> right there. That. Isn't that fun? You know, it is October, right? That's right. It is October. Yeah, and so our dime hoop will have one finger. Now, our, ours are a little different. They are not that <clears throat> pointy plastic arrow, but they're in the proper location. And all it needs to do is depress the uh, pantograph. There's, you know, look at your machine. You'll know what I'm talking about. And and it depresses it, and in that just in that one area, and tells it it's the mid size hoop. So. That's what's so wonderful about those hoops. And they are beautiful hoops for Bernina, for sure. Okay. So let's see. So Judy Blomgreen says she has a heck of a time putting um, the rulers on her hoop. So here's what you should first understand, Judy. They're not rulers, okay? They're not measuring anything. They're just placement guides. And so let's take a look at a standard hoop. And you'll notice there is no ruler on the standard hoop either. There are some little nodules here and here and here with uh, companions on the exact same location at the other end of the hoop, same as here. So the secret to applying these, now we have a blog, we have a crosshair that, that you can stitch out on stabilizer and use to apply the rulers, but all you have to know is you just want to get the zero in the same location at the top and bottom of the hoop. Frankly, it doesn't even have to be in the center. It's okay if the zero is here and the zero is here because you're using these lines to align fabric and that fabric may have a crosshair on it like a template it may have a stripe it may have a seam and that's all you're using it for this is not for measuring at all so we don't even call them rulers anymore we just call them placement guides right ashley yes exactly just for yeah. making sure that everything's square in the hoop yeah it's just for making sure you're square in the hoop so don't fret about applying those rulers. Don't yeah. fret about that. Okay. What else are we supposed to do, Ashley, before we get to our showdown? Hmm. hmm. I think that, was that it? I think so. Rhonda Martinez has three different sizes and loves every one of them. I know. Oh, and Lady Fair. Oh, come on, Lady Fair. She has the five by seven hoop and hasn't tried it yet. Right, yeah, Shame yeah. on you. So Lady Fair, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have a, you know, like a, an old Terry cloth towel in the garage, you know, that you use to wash a car or some kind of yeah. something under the sink, you know, just an old rag? That's what you're going to hoop. You're going to hoop <laughs> That's that. That's the first thing. Yeah, just hoop that. <laughs> And write your name, stitch your name, or stitch your husband's name, or stitch your dog's name, anybody's name, or stitch a heart, stitch whatever you want. Just get familiar with it. And so we are going to hoop a terry cloth towel yes. and a onesie, a left chest, and a quilt sandwich. Mm -hmm. Now, Ashley is uh, going to use the standard hoop. And I'm going to use the magnetic hoop. Now, I know she's going to struggle. So... 
I could put on my special hooping glasses <laughs> so that she doesn't have an advantage over me or I don't have an advantage over her. But I, I think it's I you that, having the advantage over me for sure. You think so? Mm -hmm. I do. But, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I can see a little bit. And so, but I'm going to take them off because goodness knows what will happen if I were to hoop with them on. All right. Okay, so we ready? All right, Sam, what are we going to do? We are going, to, oh, wait, before we do that, let's answer Janice Carroll, because she says she can only afford one, doesn't know what size to purchase. It's a great question, Janice. Yeah. So we, um, we often give this advice. Stop for a moment and think about what size hoop you normally gravitate to in your standard embroidery hoop, it, you know, in your sewing room. Are you always reaching for that five by seven? Are you a quilter and going for the eight by 12? Or, you know, what's your go-to size? That's the size that you should get in a monster hoop because you're probably doing most of your projects in that size. Now, if you're a quilter, we suggest you buy the largest hoop available for your sewing machine, your embroidery machine, because big is better in quilting, right, Ashley? Absolutely. Fewer hoopings uh, from that bigger hoop to get your entire quilt quilted. So I agree. Bigger is better mm -hmm. for the quilting. Right. But, you know, big, you have to fill it with fabric, right? So if you're not a quilter, and you just think, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to get that nine and a half by nine and a half because my, 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 ugh, my machine accepts it. You know, stop and think a minute. You know, that's a pretty big T-shirt, pretty big sweatshirt. Can't do a onesie in a nine and a half by nine and a half, right? It would be hard yeah. to do a left chest in that big hoop for sure, <laughs> too, also. Yeah. yeah. I know. Okay. So Lady Fair says, uh, you should see, she says, you should see me hoop and use t-shirts on the standard hoops. Yeah. Well, you're going to watch Ashley do that. So we'll all get a little, a little, um, little chuckle, right? Oh, my right, Ashley's right. frozen. Okay. Well, there we go. So Ashley, what are we going to start with first? What's up first? Um, I have my towel ready. Do you want to start with that? Yeah, you bet. Okay. So I'll head over okay. to my overhead. And I'm okay. going to get a, um, I guess I'll just use my four by four because I'm going to do a small monogram. So I'll bring that into the scene. And okay, well, I guess, are you going to do the countdown? Are you ready, Ashley? I think I'm One. ready. Can you hear me? It's when I add my extra camera that I start to lag. So are you hearing me okay and seeing the camera? We do hear you. So I'm going to give us a countdown, right? So one, two, three, start. Okay. So I am using no dime tools, so I have to do everything manually. So I'm going to mark my <laughs> center for my towel with my marker. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't even Crash show it. up. I know. And then I have to hoop and open this really big. And then I like to hoop sideways. So it's hanging out. I can't even hardly see my mark. <laughs> I didn't get it open big enough. Yeah. Well, that's because it's terry cloth towel, right? <laughs> right. Oh, my. Okay, okay. I think I got it that time. Finally, finally, if it doesn't pop out. Oh, I think it's going to pop out. Maybe I have it backwards. There. Oh, it popped out again. Eileen, I need my yeah. magnetic Yeah, well, hoop. I'm hooped. And actually, I'm already embroidered. I have my monogram already <laughs> stitched. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely uh, need my magnetic hoop for the towel. <laughs> okay, so they're telling me, Eileen, give Ashley a head start. And then creative applications, be nice to Ashley. This is not a fair advantage. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh. This is what would happen. That yeah. And is. Risa, you're I right. Agree. I'm not even. I agree. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even hurrying. Yeah. And look sure. at this. I even lost my little magnet out of my, uh, out of my hoop here. Um, the little attachment. Because the screw I, on the bottom. Oh, I hate those parts. If you've had that happen. She's kind of lagging a little bit. Let's just give her a minute. Um, what if you float the towel, Ashley? Well, yeah, you know, meh, maybe, right? But who wants to put a terry cloth towel and sticky stabilizer? 
That is uh, am not Am I still a, here or am I frozen? You're here now. We hear you now. So Lisa Fleming wants to know, what if you float the towel, Ashley? Well, that on sticky stabilizer, you know, terry cloth, terry loops on sticky stabilizer are not a good thing. They want to separate. Okay, so that's why we wouldn't float the towel. All right, so Ashley, are you, we're having a little trouble with our Ashley. I hate this. So maybe she needs to go in and out. <laughs> Delia Flores says, we all, we all know that Ashley hasn't used the standard hoops. Yeah, you're right. Believe me, once you get a snap hoop monster, you're hanging those standard hoops on in a storage spot, maybe in a on a you know pegboard or something, and you're really never going to use use them again, for sure. Um, could you machine baste it to stabilizer before hooping, Mary? You could do that, but think about that. So even when you are basting a uh, terry cloth towel to stabilizer that's already hooped, you know, there's a really good chance you're not going to land your towel squarely, right? You're still going to be just holding on to it and it's going to be moving around and wiggling. So it's not really a good practice to float um, on tearaway stabilizer because, eh, you know, it's not going to work out so well. Are you back, Ashley? How are you doing? Not yet. Okay, she's trying. She's trying. Okay, she's going around to the other side of the room because we're going to move on to the next project, which I think is going to be, I could refer to the, um, to the agenda that we wrote out, and that's going to be a left chest t-shirt. And so Retha Ranke, she hangs her plastic hoops on a command hook that fell in the middle of the night and scared her husband. Oh, yeah. Well, that would scare me for sure. I guess the command hooks are only good for so long, right? Or maybe that you just had too much weight on it. Might be a good idea to take the heavy fabric out of the hoop when you're hanging it on the command hook. <laughs> Retha, just teasing you. Just kidding with you. Okay, so we think I, she's trying to come back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Carol Lombard says, yeah, poor Ashley. She's still hooping. <laughs> that was a great line. Thank you. That's right. Carol had to leave to finish my towel. <laughs> She's in her garage getting a hammer to put the inner ring, outer ring. Oh, my. That's so true. That's so true. I like to stand and hoop, and so I thought maybe that would give me a little more speed, which is why I was on the other side over there. Yeah. But um, but here I'm sitting, but I still think I can get it done. Uh, okay. It probably won't be. Um, it'll be no match for the monster hoop, but I think that this will work a little bit better. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. You are you ready? I think so. Let me just grab okay. my marking pin, and that's the last thing I need. So, what's the next thing we're gonna hoop? So we're gonna do the left chest embroidery. So a t-shirt. Okay. Okay. And I did. I already have mine on there, but you're probably going to. I have my template on there, but you're you're gonna measure. All right. So I'll kind of give you a moment, a heads up. You know, a little. <laughs> <laughs> and I do already have my stabilizer on. So, um, so yeah, so let me share my, uh, my screen here and. Okay. So Ashley's bringing up her other camera and when she does that, then we'll go ahead and get started. And, um, lady fair says the dreaded t-shirt that's her nemesis. So we understand. Okay, Ashley, have you had an opportunity to get over there to your other camera? There we go. I think I'm ready. Here we are. Okay, so she's, wow, you got rulers, lasers, marking pens. And my husband hair. holding it, helping. Right. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. you tell me when you're ready. All right, let's go. All right. <laughs> Do you have a timer? The timer. Okay. All right. So I'll take my four by four. 
And I'm just going to insert that flat bottom hoop into the garment. And I, I'm just flattening out the back of the t-shirt so I get a nice flat surface here. You know, it's good to have everything flat so that you don't capture, you know, uh, part of the back of the t-shirt into the front of the t-shirt, then you wind up with a bib. So I can see my frame here and I just kind of want to make sure I'm somewhat square. And then I'll take the magnetic top and place that perpendicular to the frame, smooth the fabric, yes. keep my hands out of the way and I'm done. Ooh. You did I, good, Ashley. I think I got it. That one was a little easier, um, but um, but yeah, the marking takes some time. And uh, Eileen, look look what happened. Oh, it came loose. My shirt uh, was actually stuck in the back, but um, stuck in the back. Yeah. So kind of, Ashley. Sorry, but you failed that. <laughs> <laughs> but here, I'm going to finish it out. So I am pushing out my sleeves. Right. I definitely want to push out those sleeves. Make sure they are completely visible. I know where they are. I want them up on the top of the hoop. And then to go to the machine, I'm going to take my magnet shield, place it underneath the hoop and carry this over to the machine. When I get to the machine, once I have it attached, I'll then nest all of this garment around the sewing field. And uh, then I'll center my needle over that template, remove the template and stitch that design. Now, um, one of my friends wanted to know, how do we get the D Dime logo? Well, that was super easy, Joe Beckett. I mean, we have great software that allows us to just go in and and uh, write Dime in the proper text and stitch it out. So, yeah, I didn't have to pay anybody to do that. I could do that myself. How about you, Ashley? I'm sure you could do that. Oh, absolutely. You know, I'm a software junkie when it comes to embroidery. So I create... Yeah. So many things, Eileen, some of them I never even stitched because I just love playing in the software and just seeing what I can make it do. Yes, absolutely. And a simple logo like that, you know, there's nothing to it. That's just a word. Just type yeah. it in with the keyboard. Make sure it's sized, sized properly and stitch, out, uh, stitch it out. I love it. So let's see. The hooping guards are awesome with this project. Yeah. yeah, I don't often use a hoop hoop guard for large t-shirts because I feel like, you know, this is an adult, let's see, um, an adult medium. That's an ample size and, you know, of nesting. I don't have to worry about that falling into the sewing field. But um, later on in today's program, we're going to do a onesie and I'm definitely going to use a hoop guard for that. Yep. Okay, you did okay. Yeah, that one um, quicker. Part of it, I didn't have to open up the hoop as far um, for that one, but, you know, marking that left chest, you know, the measuring down, I can't say I did a good job marking. So um, even though it was accomplished, wasn't the best. So, right. yeah. One of those garments that you got to stand like this when you wear it right. so that right. it looks level. Yeah. That's you, hope so your, you hope everybody else had their, or didn't have their V8 so that, uh, yeah, things are a little crooked. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's see. Barbara Doomler wants to know, can we get that wall behind Eileen? Well, funny, you should ask. Because a couple of times we've had, um, I've had viewers ask, how are those hoops hanging on your wall? Well, it's not the hoops that are hanging on the wall. It's the small quilts. So I'll show you. They're just on clips and I just unclip it. And there's my hoop. Yep, I'm all stitched. I'm all ready to, you know to show that hoop. This is the nine and a half by, no, this is the eight and a half by eight and a half, which I'm going to hoop a quilt sandwich in next. But that's how they are hanging there. So there's just these little clips that go into the slat wall. This is slat wall. You know, uh, you often see this in a retail location, right? This is where they hang product for sale and so forth. And we put it in here because we thought it would be uh, helpful to display a lot of the product that we show during um, Facebook Live. It is a lot of stripes, so I'm not so sure I like it. But anyway, okay. So Ashley, our next up, speaking of quilt sandwiches, right? Yep. Sounds great. You're ready? I'm going okay. to go with a little bit bigger hoop this time, so. Okay. I'm just going to unhoop. We're not quite ready. 
So I got to clear off my mess. Oh yeah, you have a pretty good one. Yeah. I love that quilt, that whale fabric. Nice and bright. Yeah, nice yeah. and bright. Now I had a template. Oh well, that's okay. I'm gonna have Sorry, to go just slide here because I've got to, you know, I've got to loosen my hoop. That's part of it's part of standard hooping. Right. Okay. So, you know, I have a quilt sandwich. Are, are we starting? Are we running the? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I have my. I've just covered my frame with my quilt sandwich, and I'm going to place that magnetic frame on top. Drop it. I'm hooped. Look, oh my gosh. And you talked about it more than it took to do it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. the, I'm the, this is going to pop out. So, because I, you, that's the problem with the, 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 the quilt sandwich and the standard hoop. So, it's pretty yeah. tight. And um, you start moving, and that inner ring will just pop out there. So, right. <laughs> And that Definitely happens, you know, once you, fall, yeah, once you are falling in love with the project, that happens, right? Right. And then, of course, if that pops at the machine, then, of course, it's going to make a mess um, on your quilt. So, yeah, so yeah definitely, so, definitely need my big quilt. Right. We could take a look at a big quilt that I have over here on the Weightless Quilter. And uh, you can just give that a moment and it'll focus for us folks, but um, it's stitching out. So that quilt, it's really not that large. It's 45 inches wide by I think 60 inches in length, uh, but isn't it a pretty sunny fabric? It's so nice. But I thought I would show you how easy it is to advance the hoop for, you know, continuous embroidery or quilting, edge to edge quilting, or even custom quilting, doesn't matter. But when I have a quilt on the machine, the last thing I want to do is take the entire quilt off to re-hoop just for one hooping that, and actually those edge to edge designs stitch in three minutes. So here, all I'm doing really is taking the hoop, the hoop quilt off the machine, re-hooping in a standard hoop, putting it all back on, and then pressing go, and then that you know, three minutes. I got to do it all over again. Maybe right, 50, absolutely. 60 times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I think people think that they're gonna walk away, but really, the the run stitch designs. I think stitch, like you said, they're really quick. So yeah. you're really just you know stitching, and you know you may be able to look away for a minute while it stitches or whatever, but then you're mm -hmm. ready to to move on to the next spot. So it's really um, it's interactive kind of embroidery. Absolutely. So here, we'll just stop this machine because it's not really stitching. But um, I just thought I'd show you. So if this was complete, I would raise that presser foot, lift that top frame, just store it over the head of the machine, and then advance my fabric to the next area. I would use a template, but if this was a quilt that had blocks and sashing and so forth, then I would just be centering my embroidery foot in that block to stitch the next next design. So I do want to make sure, you know, that I'm attached. And here is where I would want to use my jumbo hoop guard. So the jumbo hoop guard is long and it's been designed to work with our larger hoops. And what it's going to do is allow this bundle of quilt sandwich to stay over in this area and not fall into the hoop. So it creates a barrier. It has, uh, it's in the shape of an L and this bottom piece is just going to snap right underneath that hoop on the bottom. And I make sure that the barrier is always on the exterior of the hoop. If I were to put it on the inside, then the um, needle bar would hit that hoop guard. So always make sure that it's on the outside of the hoop and you only need it on the right side. We don't need it over there. Okay, and off we go, and it's just gonna stitch. So let's see, uh, what size is currently being shown, Barbara? That is the nine and a half by nine and a half hoop on, on the weightless quilter. And um, Lady Fair, the hoop guard is attached to the bottom of the magnetic frame, the top frame. And then you would have your quilt sandwich. And then underneath of that, you would have your metal frame. 
So that's why, you know, we do it like that. And uh, you only need it on one side. You don't need it at the back of the hoop or the front of the hoop. We only use it on the right side. That's where the roll wants to fall into the sewing field. So you just need one. Yeah, we love it. Isn't that a lifesaver? Absolutely. It's uh, yeah. kind of like stitch insurance, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Brenda uh, Abernathy says she likes my shirt. Yeah, this is my this is my hoop tunic, my hoop dress. And that's custom fabric that we printed with our logo all over it. You know, and we I do that on cotton fabric for a lot of my quilts, same thing, so that, you know, have our branding on it. Isn't that fun? Love that. Okay. So Ashley, what else? Well, I think the last thing we have is our onesie, right? Our our body yeah. suit, baby body suit. So yeah. Okay, so here's uh, Singrid. We have a, a question from her. She says, can she use the brother, use our hoops on a brother NV870? So earlier in today's program, Singrid, we um, talked about how you can go to dzgns.com and there you can view the compatibility chart. And you will go to the compatibility chart, find the page for your machine brand, which is brother, and then scroll through the list of machines to find yours and the hoop sizes that we make for the 870. And do we ship to an APO address? Um, I'm not sure about that, probably. And we'll have somebody in our customer service team will pipe in here and answer to that, yeah. And Regina wants to know, that she, she said she missed some of the presentation. Will it be available after we're done? Absolutely. All of these live sessions that we do every Thursday at 1 o'clock Central Time uh, is continues to live on YouTube and Facebook. So you can always go back and rewatch. And you can advance to um, the, you know, the portion that you missed or that you got you want to watch one or two more times to really get a technique down. So... And Joe Beckett loves watching the weightless quilter. Mm -hmm. So do I. I love watching how it sways back and forth. Right, Ashley? Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like yeah. a soothing, like watching an aquarium. Right. You know, at, when you go to a trade show, Ashley, or like the state fair and somebody is, you know, selling embroidery machines, there's always one or two people or even possibly a whole crowd around the embroidery machine. They're mesmerized by watching the hoop move and the stitches lay down on the fabric, right? Yeah, that's what sold me my first embroidery machine was that very thing. And at a fair, I was just at the... Uh, at my local store and I thought I just wanted a sewing machine, but that was stitching and it didn't take much to convince me that I needed it. Right. Well, we've also learned that the weightless quilter does the very same thing, you know, at a trade show, at a store, when this is running, people are like, what's moving in the corner? They can see this whole quilt kind of moving so gracefully. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> and Mary S. Larson, she says that the weightless quilter uh, are, one of her favorite, her two favorite tools, that and the spray tent. They are light years apart, but I understand why you like both for sure. Okay, Ashley, we have one more to do. I do. Yeah. This is kind of a tough one, right? <laughs> the baby right, let clean up. Well, let me, uh, let me put my hoop, my fabric back on the wall, if you don't mind. Absolutely. We'll hang that back up there and they can see, yeah, it really is just fabric, a little quilt sandwich hanging on that wall. And I just put that metal frame behind the fabric and then attach the top in place. There you have it. And you know, you do the same thing in a machine. You do the same thing when you're on your work surface. It's that easy to hoop in a flat snap hoop monster. They are perfection. If I say so myself, right, Ashley? That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So Ashley has the white onesie and I have a little teal one. Okay. And I'm going to use the four by four standard hoop. I already have my template in place. You probably are going to measure yours. Is that right? That is right. So you just tell me when you're ready to start. Okay. Let's hold on one second. We have to, um, Hang on one second. Um, we have some, we just.
I think you're muted, Eileen. I can't hear you if you are ready to go. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, got, Ashley. It got quiet too all the time. Yeah. Too many cooks in the kitchen, right? Right. Okay. So, Ashley, are we ready? Shall we start the timer? Let's do it. All right. So, I have mine in place. Here we go. I have my stabilizer already adhered to the wrong side of the design area. I'm going to take my metal bottom. I'm going to place it this way so it's facing me. And then I will um, place the hoop guard in the front of the machine. I mean, the front of the hoop. And then I'm going to slide it through the garment. And just feel that it is somewhat centered. Oh, always don't loosen it enough. <laughs> always have to loosen more. <laughs> you poor right. thing, Ashley. I know, I know. I just snapped it. And I didn't even use the hoop guards. I knew that I wouldn't be able to accomplish that in two minutes, probably. <laughs> Yeah, well, I did, and I'm hooped, and my sewing field is wide open, and I am ready. <laughs> well, you there's did just, pretty good. You there's pretty just good. no match. There's no match for the Snap Poop Monster, that's for sure. Pretty and good. our dime tools, which make our life easier. This is the perfect example of um, yeah. how quick this can be if you're using tools that make the process go faster and uh, much easier, so for sure. Right. And you're going to have to sit at your machine and really babysit I all know. of that fabric. You're literally going to have to hold your hands like that, right? Just like that. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. whereas you'll be able to put yours on and then multitask yeah. a little bit while I'm sitting there. Okay, so let's see. So why uh, Kit wants to know, why can't you use a template with the onesie and the standard hoop? Well, you can use the template for sure in, in a, with no matter what hoop you're going to use. It's just clunky. Uh, and time consuming to hoop a onesie in a standard hoop. Yeah. Right. And I was using the other thing too. I was using all non dime tools. So I, uh, the, the template that Eileen printed was on our print and stick target paper. So when she places her template down, it stays in place. So I was just using all, you know, uh, non dime, uh, tools for mine. So that my marking pen, uh, things like that, but notice how that template just stays right in place while she was hooping. It yeah. wasn't moving at all. And so right. that, that was the key. Yeah. And I can peel that off, which of course I would, you know, so then I just lift that and then remove it um, after I have centered the needle over that uh, crosshair. And then I'm all set. So let's see, Marie Claire wants to know, do the magnetic hoops prevent puckering? Um, she says she had another project that was large and said, I should have maybe used my monster hoop. Well, um, possibly it could prevent puckering. And probably the number one reason why it can is because you can make minute adjustments after you've hooped in a snap hoop monster because it's flat. So you can pull the fabric, make sure it's nice and taut. Unlike in a standard hoop, we've always been told once you hoop the fabric, never tug on the fabric because that's what adds to fiber distortion. Right, Ash? Right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, of course, stabilizer is key to puckering also, but that's a Deborah Jones class. <laughs> the right stabilizer for the right project. Right. And if you don't have Deborah Jones um, in the room next door, like Eileen, you definitely yeah. want her borders compass. <laughs> right. For sure. Yeah. Exactly which decision. I mean, Deborah is not always in the room next door, but her compass sure is. I have that, you know, handy all the time. I have one here right in the studio and I have one at home uh, in my um, in my sewing studio. So, you know, it's awesome. You just spin the wheel to the fabric that you are using. And in the window, it tells you what stabilizer to use. And down here, it tells you what needle. Oh, beautiful. No more guessing. No more guessing at all. Yeah. Oh, Marianne Dublagla just got her compass yesterday. Woo woo. Love that. Right? Yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ashley, you did a fantastic job. Have to give you a round of applause. <laughs> Even though you weren't the winner, you know, just saying, but. <laughs> It just so goes to show you there are so many ways out there to do things quicker and easier. And when you're embroidering, um, you get more done in a day if you can get it hooped yeah. and the placement yeah. perfect, um, nice and quick. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have a question. What if you never put the measuring tape on the hoop and you misplaced it? We do sell replacement um, adhesive placement guides is what we call them. We don't really call them rulers anymore. So you most certainly can do that um, and but you know, a lot of, not everybody uses them. I don't always use them. It depends on, on what you use. It's handy to have them on there for sure. Then you have some alignment marks that you can use for many different projects. And uh, you know, don't throw them out when you get them. Right. So Ashley, you know, this is the time in the program where we always talk about on the house. And last week we did this really fun project. Wasn't that so much fun? So yeah. cute. With, yeah, it's really cute. So uh, this is a, a 10 by 10 block. And uh, so it's a large embroidery design for those with large hoops. But those with five by seven hoops received a mini collection of a mouse and a broom. And the skirt and boots is the one design. The cat is another. And then the spiders were um, the fifth one. So, you know, we don't leave you out if you have a five by seven hoop. Now the stretching cat, you may recognize from an earlier release uh, on, on the house, but this one's a little bit different. I mirrored him and I made his eyes two different colors. So you can see we have an orange eye and a black and a green eye. So, so much fun. I hope you'll take the time to make this because uh, it's really a very nice decoration for October. Absolutely. And speaking of um, some of the projects that we have found out there, we uh, I thought I would share what Rainbow Coxon did on. Now, this butterfly was released earlier in the year. And if you remember, on the house embroidery designs are still on our website. They're still available for you to download. There will be 52 of them this year. And so they're all still there starting from the first week of January. And this beautiful butterfly was released, I think, maybe in April. But isn't that gorgeous? And she stitched it on balsa wood. Yeah. Love that. Actually, Cute. Yeah, she loved Cute. that. And maybe we'll do that next week. You never <laughs> know. Wouldn't that be fun? Because yeah. it's a great reason to use a flat hoop. So that would be really fun. Yeah. And that's our good friend, Reed Wilcoxon at Embroidery Garden. And then Marianne McCain Dottie did, uh, she used uh, our on the house design. She duplicated it perfectly. She said she had all the fabric in her stash. And instead of a purple overskirt, she used uh, one with silver glitter. Isn't that fun? That is so cute. I love it. Yeah. Great it's really, job. yeah, she did a really good job. She really did. And so this week, Today, that's available now for all of you, is our fall design. This beautiful um, embroidery design fits in a five by seven hoop, I believe. And it is letters from our Taj Mahal uh, font that's in our word art and stitches, right, Ashley? So what we did was we pulled out three letters, F, A, and L, and stacked them together like this. So cute. So cute. I can't wait to see what everybody makes with the with this fall design. So adorable. I can think of many things already. Yes. And now this is a little different than the Taj Mahal, you know, designs. Those of you who have our word art and stitches, you have the F, the A and the L and the Taj Mahal font. But I've changed some of the little elements of it. So I changed, I think, in the L, uh, previously they were flowers and I did leaves and you can see the second L has like little berries. Yeah. And also I added some leaves to the A. So to show you how much fun, if you have software, which we love here at Dime, yeah, absolutely. you can do these types of things too. And next week we're gonna talk some software. We're gonna talk about organizing your designs.
And Ashley's a pro at that, aren't you, Ashley? <laughs> I don't know about a pro at the organizing, but <laughs> I do try to keep on top of it. But that's something else that um, we do have to stay on top of and software can make it easier. So we're going to see how you can view the images and that makes it easier to sort uh, designs as well. So and I was going to do a little editing of a design uh, too, just kind of manipulating it and, and uh, breaking it apart. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be fun. Lots of information. But yeah, I love my software. I couldn't live without it. It's kind of like my snap hoop monster um, makes my life easier and makes the embroidery um, easier as well. Awesome. So our folks are asking, are the hoops on sale? They are on sale all month. And snapsters. Here we and go. yeah, well, we had a little blip in the uh, internet here, I think. So uh, I, we will be represented at the Houston Quilt Festival at the first weekend in November by our friends at All Brands. So if you're looking for dime product at um, Quilt Festival, you'll find it in All Brands. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. We love spending an hour with you every Thursday. So. Uh, Come back here next week at one o'clock and we'll have lots more in store for you.